Uh, you've already heard the theme, the missing piece in the fight against corruption and bad governance. My name is Eva Shelton. In 2016, a close friend of mine informed me about a scholarship opportunity. It was a prestigious, coveted, and an extremely competitive opportunity. Now, I still had about a few weeks before the application deadline, and I had taken time to write out my essays and collated all my documents. But then I realized that as part of the requirements, I could not submit my academic documents without an attestation uh, from the Commission on Higher Education and a notary stamp from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Liberia. The cost of obtaining these two documents was about US $50 or thereabout. And so with a relatively little time remaining, I anxiously embarked on the process. I first visited the office of the commission. It was a Thursday morning, it was rainy, but it was also very humid. And there must have been about 25 students trying to get this attestation for different reasons. And I was there amongst them, uh, present. I was seated, uneasy, perspiring profusely, you know, visibly anxious. Uh, then came the time for the civil servant in charge to explain the process to us. He strutted to the front of the assembly, and he started to speak while concurrently scanning the crowd with his eyes. And I suppose that uh, this officer must have perfected his craft over several years, because by the end of his speech, he has so very easily discerned who amongst us was pressed against time and urgently needed this document. So he pulled me and the three other anxious students to the side, and he offered to help us to get the documents as urgently as each of us needed it. But only if we pay him 100 US dollars. Now that's about four times more than the actual cost of obtaining the document. And to be very honest with you, <laughs> if I had the money, I definitely would have paid, but I didn't have it. But I was sad you know, and of course, furious at the same time. This is an, is an example of corruption. And yes, that is how it makes a person feel. Violated, powerless, and angry. Now, I acknowledge that to, for most of us, uh, this subject has either become a cliche or it has somewhat become relentlessly tedious to hear because once too often, it has been deliberated on with no clear solution in sight. And that is why it is necessary we remind ourselves that the only solution to this cancer, corruption and bad governance, has been the same for many years. To build strong institutions, brilliant idea. Several countries around the world, including Denmark, Finland, New Zealand and Singapore, to name a few, have all commendably made significant strides in in building strong institutions to fight corruption and to dissuade bad governance, while other nations, mostly poor and developing, are still encountering impediments in this fight. And this leads me to wonder, why have strong institutions become successful in some countries in the fight against corruption and bad governance, but far less effective or virtually non-existent in other countries such as mine? Why has corruption in my country and others like it become substantially endemic? Why is it extensively encouraged and freely practiced? I believe, amongst other reasons, that uh, we have failed in overcoming this endemic monster because of the scarcity of individual commitment and action, or the lack thereof. Individual commitment and action. It is this missing piece that has either been ignored or not sufficiently talked about. This is what must complement strong institutions in order for them to work. Institutions do not run themselves, neither do policies implement themselves. The variable 
which is essential when complementary, is the people, the individuals. You see, while the fight against corruption and bad governance is a collective responsibility, the foundational strength of institutions stems from individual actions and commitment, uh, such that even if a country has all the adequate policies towards strengthening institutions, without individual commitment and action, those institutions will either crumble or they will never work as best and effectively as they should, if they work at all. And here's an example as it relates to my country regarding this thing. You see, I'm from Liberia. Now, Liberia is a small country stretching about 43,000 square miles along the coast of West Africa. Uh, some of you may remember Liberia because of the horrifying accounts of the 14-year fratricide of saver conflict uh, that took the lives of some 250,000 men, women, and children. Or some of you may also remember Liberia because of the legendary soccer player, Josh Ware, who went on to become the only African to receive the World Best Player Award. But in any case, what I can tell you for certainty is Liberia is an extremely beautiful and endowed nation with, with great landscape, advantageously blessed with a youthful and vibrant population. If there is anything policy expert who love about my country, it is that we have exciting policies on paper to support the building and existence of strong institutions. But in the same live area, institutions are effective and corruption takes on several different forms from paying bribes to sextortion to siphoning of public funds, amongst others. In the same Liberia, corruption is embraced, it is applauded, and it is defended by those who perpetrate it and by those who receive benefits from the perpetrators. It is considered as a means to get ahead in the competition, to, to get the next government contract, to maneuver towards obtaining the next scholarship, to not waste your time in traffic or in a passport queue. Like most countries, uh, the policies are in place, the institutions are resistant, but corruption is the norm. Why? Because there is a missing piece to the puzzle. The lack of individual commitment and action to complement strong institutions. And that begs the question, how then can we develop and demonstrate individual commitment to complement strong institutions in the fight against corruption? Now, I know most of you here, you know, um, some listening, uh, you may be policy experts and you're policy enthusiasts, so I can imagine you're probably thinking about some explosive policy suggestions. I don't know what they are, but I can tell that they're brilliant ones. But no, many of those have already been explored. Uh, my recommendations today are very simple because they involve you as an individual. I recommend two things that we can do to demonstrate individual commitment to an action to tackling corruption, the missing piece. One, develop patience and avoid procrastination. How does this relate to corruption? Irrelevant, you may think. <laughs> Let's try and put this into context. Uh, think about my story at the beginning of this talk. Uh, like most students preparing for international scholarships, I could have obtained my documents way in advance, immediately after my graduation. I should have, but I didn't. I procrastinated. And consequently, this civil servant who was in charge, he could very easily request a bribe from me because he knew that I was pressed against time and that I was anxious and impatient trying to get things done as quickly as possible. And this is how we create opportunities for perpetrators to practice their craft. But think about this, what if I had individually committed to regularizing my documents way ahead of the time of the application, not waiting till the last minute before starting the process? Don't you agree that my commitment would have diminished the chances for corruption to be practiced in that context? By our simple individual actions, we can complement institutions in the fight against corruption. Number two. Speak about corruption and educate others about it. Now, you see, 
where silence to what corrupt acts is normalized, corruption not only flourishes, but it is also encouraged. And, and this is also true about my country and many others like it. Uh, corruption has existed in Liberia from the inception of our history, worsening with every or each successive government. Eventually, uh, people became reluctant to talk about it uh, because it had gone on for so long uh, that it, it now became considered customary for uh, public officials of every new government to steal with impunity, uh, for police officers to openly exploit citizens they were charged to protect, or for ordinary citizens to uh, maneuver with trickery and extortion. They will quote a Liberian proverb to substantiate the normalcy of the act. Uh, they will say something like this, where you tie the goat, is where it will eat. Now, you may not understand what it means, but in plain English, uh, it is translated to mean a person is allowed to use his office to accumulate wealth for himself. It's true that speaking about corruption and educating others about it may not entirely alter the behavior of the corporates, but one thing is certain, it will engender righteous indignation from the youth and much of the population. And this was most recently demonstrated in Liberia sometime in 2020 uh, with the emergence of a pressure group called the Council of Patriots. Now, uh, they are now one of the largest advocacy group in Liberia uh, with thousands of individual Liberians, patriotic ones. Using social media platforms and a local talk show, uh, members of this group spoke against corruption and bad governance on ending for several months. As a result, they stimulated righteous anger and about corruption and bad governance on a national scale. They kick-started a nationwide conversation about it, and they oversaw the largest protest in the history of the country against corruption and bad governance. The work of this group showed that the more we talk about corruption, the more abnormal it becomes. And the more abnormal it becomes, the more uncomfortable the perpetrators become. And this is why I have renewed faith in my country and others like it. Uh, today in Liberia, uh, people are angrier about corruption and bad governance uh, and its accompanying culture of impunity than they have ever been at any point in our country's history. And this spirit of optimism that I have is one of hope uh, that is sparked by the engagement of young people. Now, ever since my encounter with the corrupt official that I talked about at the beginning of this talk, I have remade my world and ensured that I do not create any opportunity for corruption to flourish like I did four years ago. But the question is, will you remake yours too? You see, in order to complete a puzzle and create a whole picture, you need individual pieces. Strong institutions may be part of the puzzle, but our individual commitment and actions will create the whole picture. Your individual commitment and action is the missing piece that is needed to complement strong institutions in the fight against corruption and bad governance. I implore you, remake your world with your individual commitment and action. Let's end corruption. Start now, start today. Thank you.